Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of cloud computing. Today's topic is evolution of cloud computing. So in this video, I'll be talking about the history and evolution of cloud computing. Let us begin. First, once again, let me tell you what is cloud computing. About it in the detail, I have discussed in the previous video. But just to remind you, cloud computing is what? This is the combination of two words, cloud plus computing. So cloud computing, it is actually the on-demand availability of computer system resources. On-demand availability, whenever there is a requirement to uh, of the resources, you can request it and accordingly you can pay it. So computer system resources may be like in the terms of the data storage, some applications, computing power and here it's a very important, very interesting like uh, feature. Here there is no direct active involvement of the user, direct active involvement of the user. It means cloud computing, you can say it is all about the renting computing services, means you are paying for the services which you are using and it evolves primarily and uh, this idea came into the picture initially in 1950. So when we are talking about the cloud computing, there are various technologies which have played a very key role. So it is a set of five technologies. Those are distributed system and peripherals, visualization, web 2.0, service orientation and the utility computing. So these are the technologies which have played a very vibrant role, right? Now let us discuss one by one how we can observe or how it evolves from year 1952 till now. So you can see in this particular diagram, the overall progress is being shown. Let us start from uh, initial first point, which is about the distributed computing in year 1950 from the term distributed it is clear something means we are going to distribute something it means whatever the computer system resources we are having those can be shared among the various users so all those resources can be utilized very effectively and efficiently but what happened here since the utilization is very effective but because uh, there is a limitation that all the systems must be at the same geographical location. So what happened? This is a kind of limitation. Though distributed computing, distributed system has various advantages. Advantages in the terms of scalability, concurrency, continuous availability, independence in failure. See, when the computer system resources have been distributed, so in the case of the failure of one resource, it is not going to impact the services to the other users. Like, so these are the properties. But what happened, as I've told you that the limitation is all the resources must be at the same geographical location. So this problem, this limitation is being actually overcome into the three next computings which is the mainframe computing cluster computing and the grid computing so the advancement of the distributed computing which is the mainframe computing mainframe computing means these are very very powerful and reliable computing machines and these machines about which we are talking which is the mainframe computing so these machines are responsible to handle massive amount of data huge amount of data even nowadays also for the bulk processing we are using mainframe computing uh, for the bulk processing, you can understand it with the help of an example. Suppose we are talking about the online transaction, right? So for online transaction, uh, million billions of users are uh, like utilizing this facility at the same instant of time. So what happened over here? You must have observed that uh, there is almost no downtime and even the fault tolerance, it is like we are, uh, observed at a very appreciable level. But what happened this mainframe computing, this is very expensive. So the cost of this mainframe computing is the limitation uh, and which is actually being overcome in the case of the cluster computing as an alternative. Cluster means there are certain small, small groups means, e, uh, means uh, suppose these are the cluster, cluster one, cluster two, cluster 3 and this is the cluster 
4 let us say 1 2 3 and 4 so in each and every cluster there are certain sets of machines and each machine in each and every cluster is being connected via the network with a high bandwidth so this is cheaper cluster computing in comparison to the mainframe computing and they are all, all, uh, also having almost equal capability of the high computation means doing the computation at a very fast rate and there is a like very important very interesting property in the case of the cluster computing if there is a requirement to add more and more new nodes that could be done very easily very quickly it means cost is being reduced like but the problem of the geographical restrictions still remains same so for this to overcome this particular limitation the concept of grid computing came into the picture grid means something you can observe which are connected if effectively it means uh, for the grid computing uh, like it is giving us the advantage if there are various resources and they are at the different geographical location so all suppose all these resources one two three four these are resources and they are available at the different geographical locations so all of them will be connected via the internet so these systems belongs to different organizations it means there will be a kind of grid which can be observed so grid consists of some heterogeneous nodes but what the problem which have been faced over here because all the clusters uh, like uh, have been all the machines or the resources have been connected via internet. It means network related issues might be a problem and sometimes the less availability of high bandwidth connectivity may be a problem. It, so this is actually the limitation of the grid computing and sometimes you must also heard that cloud computing because cloud computing evolves from here step by step so cloud computing can be observed to as successor of the grid computing right now come to the next which is about the virtualization virtualization you can understand something which is not actual means if you can observe something which is not available in actual that is what the virtual is so means virtualization it is a kind of version where some of the operating system some servers some storage devices some network resources are available but they are not available actual right so virtualization it is a very important key technology which is used in the case of the cloud computing so it is actually uh, many of nowadays cloud computing ser services which are available you must have heard about Amazon EC2, you must heard about VMware, vCloud. So these are actually the base upon which cloud computing services actually working. And you must also remember that hardware virtualization is still one of the most common types of the virtualization. Hardware means you have to assemble the things, whatever they being available, right? Next is web 2.2 it actually came into the picture in year 2004 web 2.2 is what how can you understand see uh, suppose there are clients and there are cloud computing services so how clients and cloud computing services will be interfaced so web 2.0 it is a interface through which cloud computing services interacts with the client right and because of this only because of this interface uh, because of this web 2.0 uh, we used to have very very good very effective interactive and dynamic web pages and also it provides us the flexibility among the web pages so web 2.0 this is very very popular and some of the examples you can recall you must be aware with see the examples of web 2.0 is what google maps facebook twitter right so it means uh, you can say that social media is possible only and only because of this technology you can see facebook twitter google maps how flexible they are how interactive and dynamic web pages are those right so this is about the web 2.0 next come to the service orientation so it is actually the service right uh, means this service orientation it is a kind of reference model reference model for 
cloud computing so this service orientation it supports very low cost and it is flexible and it keeps evolving applications so two uh, basic and very very important concepts were introduced in this computing model which we are talking about they are quality of service and software as a service right so that is about the service orientation we'll be talking in detail in the coming videos next is the utility computing so utility computing is a computing model which defines service provisioning techniques means how we are going to utilize the services for any like um, along with uh, uh, like for the storage for infrastructure so utility computing is service provisioning te technique for the users and it is actually provisioned on the basis of pay per use basis pay on depending upon the available depending upon the allocated resources depending upon the resources utilized the payment can be done so this is about the utility computing and at the last let us discuss about the cloud computing from year 2007 onwards we are utilizing it and day by day huge progress is being done so when we are talking about the cloud computing evolution we can observe that it is being bifurcated into three phases one was the idea phase idea phase was begin in early 1960s right and with the introduction of grid computing utility second phase pre phase means where pre cloud phase in year 1999 to 2006 where we are assuming in this duration internet was used as a mechanism internet was used to deliver the applications as a service this uh, this is actually the pre phase and then the third one about which we are talking the cloud phase so cloud phase actually starts from year 2007 when there are uh, the classification of these services iaas paas saas these are the various services was formalized so cloud phase starts from here so this is actually the phases of evolution of cloud computing which you can understand thank you so much for watching this video 